Uh, dear Dean, uh, Vice President, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear uh, students, uh, it's a real pleasure, first of all, to be uh, back in the classroom. And uh, <laughs> thank you for uh, inviting me to speak today at this uh, globally uh, renowned uh, uh, institution. It is indeed an honor for me to be able to uh, address you today uh, at the tail end of what I think has been a very successful uh, trip uh, to uh, Japan, uh, 48 very sort of intense uh, hours, which have given us, I think, an opportunity to completely reset uh, the relationship between uh, Japan uh, and Greece. But uh, uh, you, uh, our uh, um, uh, introductory speaker, you know, posed an interesting question. Uh, he asked me to comment a little bit on, on what he called uh, an economic miracle. I want to be a little bit more discreet and call it uh, an economic success story. Uh, but let me first uh, start um, uh, uh, with a question. The question is, what is Greece to you? And I'm especially referring to our Japanese friends uh, in uh, the audience. Perhaps uh, for most of you, uh, my country is a uh, remote location uh, associated with uh, beautiful uh, sandy beaches, sunny islands, ancient monuments such as the uh, Acropolis, uh, a rich uh, mythology, maybe Suvlaki, maybe uh, Sirtaki. And we are all of that, uh, of course, uh, but probably uh, less known to you are the following facts. Greek uh, ship owners control more than 17% of the world's merchant marine fleet in terms of deadweight tonnage, making Greece the leader of the global maritime industry. Many of those ship uh, owners started building their ships in Japan immediately after the end of the Second World War, and in their own way, have contributed to what is today, uh, I consider, a true miracle, and that is the rebuilding of uh, Japan uh, after uh, the catastrophic uh, war. Many of them continue to build their ships uh, here as we speak. Another fact that is maybe not so known um, uh, to you about our country, close to 50% of our electricity today is produced uh, from renewables. Last October, uh, for the first time in our history, for almost six hours, all of our electricity needs were met by renewable energy. And in uh, 2022, we ranked seventh in the world uh, in wind and solar power penetration uh, in our fuel mix. Last but not least, when we think of Greece, we just think of Greece as a location on the map. Uh, but the Greek communities abroad uh, are the same size to the Greek population at home. In total, people associated in one way or another with Greece, we're talking about 10 million. This is why we can jokingly say amongst ourselves that uh, Melbourne is the third largest <coughs> Greek city in the world. So uh, the story of today's uh, um, Greece is indeed a story of uh, dynamic uh, economic transformation. I think a story that resonates beyond Greece's borders. Uh, our businesses have grown in confidence and uh, dynamism, uh, and this is precisely uh, what I told some of the most uh, influential business organizations and investors in Japan when I met them yesterday and earlier today. I am the first prime minister to visit Japan uh, since 2005. When my predecessor visited your country 17 years ago, it was in the wake of Greece's successful organization of the 2004 Olympic Games. And also it was in the wake of our, for those of you who are football fans, of the greatest miracle in the history of team sports, which was none other. That was a miracle indeed, which was none other than Greece uh, winning the UEFA Euro 2004. Uh, football uh, championship. Uh, back then, these were you know, good days uh, for the country, but uh, we were very much unaware 
of the fact that a deep crisis was looming. And as you pointed out, Greece uh, underwent uh, a decade-long financial and uh, some would uh, go as far as saying existential crisis in the years that followed. Think of it, during the financial crisis, we lost almost a quarter of our GDP, a quarter of our GDP. More than 500,000 young Greeks were forced to leave the country in search of better jobs. Uh, and our decline persisted longer than was necessary because at some point uh, populists came into power and kept promoting utopian solutions. The result was that we had to sign a third bailout program back in July 2015 after my predecessor and uh, uh, his cabinet literally pushed Greece uh, to the brink of disaster. We seriously flirted uh, with being kicked out of the Eurozone, which would have been a complete disaster for our country. Thank God we avoided the worst. But you could say that the country suddenly hit rock bottom. Uh, but we are a nation that throughout our modern history, we've been an independent uh, nation, essentially. Our war of revolution started in uh, 1821. We've been an independent nation since uh, 1830. In our history, we've seen lots of triumphs, and we've also had to deal with lots of disasters. Overall, the trend has always been uh, positive, and I think uh, it is an attribute to the characteristics uh, of the Greek people that we have proven to be extremely resilient. Uh, we were resilient during this decade-old uh, crisis, uh, and uh, we managed to escape uh, the worst. So this is what I want to talk to you uh, about. How did we succeed uh, in making this uh, turnaround uh, happen? I, as you pointed out, uh, became prime minister in July 2019, winning an absolute majority in, in Parliament, uh, and uh, I had made my vision very clear to the Greek people. I, I told them that uh, I wanted to restore confidence uh, in, uh, in the country, uh, put the country on a higher uh, growth uh, track, restore macroeconomic stability, but most importantly, uh, be the prime minister who unleashes the country's true potential. Uh, to become uh, a reliable European and international partner uh, with a proactive approach in helping to shape development uh, in, uh, in a region. And my, my platform was very simple. I wanted to cut taxes without endangering the fiscal stability. I wanted to make Greece uh, an attractive investment destination and create many um, uh, well-paying uh, jobs. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that uh, Greece was viewed as a reliable and strong partner in a region, a protagonist in European developments, not a laggard, uh, a company that is focusing on solutions at the European level rather than just addressing its own problems and asking the Europeans uh, for, uh, for assistance. And, and I think we've achieved over these three and a half years many of these uh, targets. Uh, Greece today is only one step away uh, from uh, uh, regaining investment grade. This is something which is very important uh, because it will uh, unlock significant uh, new uh, pools of capital that can invest in the Greek economy. Let me just give you uh, one example which is uh, relevant to Japan. When we were looking with our team at uh, uh, the statistics of Japanese investment uh, into Greece historically, uh, they peaked at some point in 2007 uh, when uh, Japanese uh, asset managers committed around $10 billion to Greece. Uh, during the years of the crisis, this fell to almost zero, uh, simply because we lost investment grade and many more conservative asset managers could not invest in Greek assets. Imagine how much more capital we can attract just from Japan by simply regaining uh, investment uh, grade. If you look at the performance of the uh, economy in terms of, of growth, uh, we overcame the COVID uh, crisis, uh, I would say, uh, much faster than many people had anticipated. The economy grew by 8.4% uh, in 2021. Uh, it grew again by 5.6% in 2022. 
we expect growth uh, close to 2% with very challenging headwinds uh, in 2023. This growth is significantly higher than the Eurozone average. In uh, 2022, we grew at twice the Eurozone average. Uh, uh, in 2023, we may grow even faster uh, than that because uh, you know, we have uh, uh, proven to be sort of very resilient. And uh, we had to uh, combine implementation of reforms obviously with, uh, uh, with dealing with uh, uh, all sorts of crises uh, that were thrown at us, none of our own uh, making. Pandemic, uh, Russian invasion into Ukraine, but also dealing with a, with a difficult uh, and complicated uh, uh, neighbor. Uh, but uh, we've been uh, uh, able to do both crisis management while also addressing longer-term issues and making sure that we legislate not just to address today's problems, but to put the foundations for a more solid um, future and do it in a, in, in a sustainable manner. And maybe this is uh, um, uh, something that uh, you will talk about sort of in your public policy classes. How do you combine your know, short-term crisis management with long-term planning? It's not always uh, easy because uh, when you have to deal with so many crises at the same time, uh, you need to make sure that a percentage of your bandwidth is always reserved um, uh, for sort of the longer term initiatives and make sure that you distinguish between the urgent and, uh, and the important. And indeed, many of the reforms that we have implemented, from labor reform to completely changing our uh, higher education uh, system, uh, you know, from pension. Um, uh, reform uh, to digitizing the public administration are indeed reforms which will have a long-term lasting impact on the Greek economy. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, we have uh, um, uh, sort of, uh, in that sense, uh, paved the way for what I think is a more promising future. We also have access to significant uh, European funds uh, from what we call the Recovery and Resilience Facility, which was set up at the European level after COVID uh, to help with the green and digital uh, transformation. Now, speaking of, um, uh, of digital, this, in my mind, is probably the biggest success story of this um, uh, government. Uh, uh, the ability to harness the power of technology to simplify the interaction between uh, citizens and businesses and the state. Uh, Greece was notorious for its uh, you know, paper bureaucracy. Uh, uh, this is something uh, which I'm sure maybe some of you uh, uh, in, uh, in, in Japan may be able to, uh, to relate to. Uh, but uh, we've been able uh, to uh, shift uh, more than a, a thousand processes and services online, which means that you can actually interact with the state through the gov.gr uh, application in a seamless manner. Uh, and this is literally, you know, saving people hundreds of hours waiting in queues, sort of unnecessary hassle, but also in the same way, you know, in the same manner of tackling, uh, you know, petty um, uh, corruption, which is always endemic when you have uh, sort of unnecessary uh, and redundant uh, uh, bureaucracy. And of course, uh, this digital uh, transformation has also driven the emergence of a booming ecosystem of technology uh, companies uh, uh, that uh, is looking not just to serve the Greek market, uh, but also uh, does business at the European, but also at the global level, which is also very encouraging for us to see. So you look at um, uh, the international ratings, and it does give us you know, uh, some satisfaction to see that you know, The Economist uh, uh, placed us uh, at the top of its list of those countries which have seen the most significant improvement in the business environment. Um, this is uh, not something that was expected, uh, let's say, uh, three years uh, uh, ago, uh, uh, but uh, it's very, very uh, encouraging uh, uh, to see and to have this validation by an important international publication. Uh, and this uh, transition to a new economic uh, reality was also confirmed by the European uh, Commission, which took the historic decision last uh, uh, August to end what we call the enhanced surveillance framework uh, that Greece had been subject to for more than four years. So now we are essentially free uh, of the heavy uh, European supervision. And yes, uh, uh, you uh, are right uh, to point out that we did repay back our loans to the IMF 
earlier than we had anticipated. Uh, it's also an important symbolic gesture because uh, the IMF has been associated in Greece with a very sort of heavy surveillance uh, that really pushed the country, sometimes I would argue unnecessarily harshly, uh, into a vicious uh, cycle of, uh, of austerity, out of which we are just coming out. Uh, I need to, um, you know, to point out that this economic performance uh, was achieved without compromising uh, the health of our public finances. And this for us is particularly important because we started this crisis with a high debt-to-GDP ratio. It's been coming down incredibly fast. It's the fastest reduction of debt-to-GDP of any country uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in the European uh, Union. But uh, at the same time, uh, we are also changing the fabric of the economy. Our goal was always to make Greece a more open and extrovert economy, more focused on exports, uh, on the innovation. And we've been uh, able, to, uh, able to do that. Today, exports account for more than 40% of our GDP. Exports of goods and services. So it's not just tourism and shipping, it's also exports uh, of goods, uh, which means that also Greek businesses are becoming more uh, extrovert uh, and are looking to, to serve uh, regional but also uh, global markets. At the same time, if you look at the flow of foreign direct investments into the country, 2021 was a record year, 2022 was again a record year, hopefully 2023 is also going to be a record year. We've seen significant interest uh, by foreign companies to invest uh, in Greece. Uh, let me just give you a couple of examples. Uh, all the big tech companies, uh, starting with Microsoft, followed by Amazon, Google Digital Realty, are setting up big data centers uh, in, uh, in Greece and invest in, investing in Greek tech. Pfizer has set up a big uh, uh, artificial intelligence um, uh, center in Thessaloniki. GIC out of Singapore. Uh, invested in one of our leading Greek hotel operators, the largest transaction uh, in the European hospitality sector uh, that took place uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, 2022. So uh, I would argue that despite the global headwinds, and there are quite a few of them, we're well uh, positioned uh, uh, on a path of uh, uh, sustainable uh, growth. Uh, we have clearly uh, exceeded expectations uh, uh, and uh, alongside all the big economic data, probably the most important data for me uh, has been uh, uh, the job-rich nature uh, of, uh, of the recovery. When we came into power, unemployment was at 17 percent. Now it's at 11 percent. I think it will be in single digits um, uh, very, very soon. A lot of the jobs we created are jobs um, uh, for young people, many more women. Uh, so we've increased uh, uh, women's participation uh, in uh, uh, in the labor force, uh, and uh, uh, there is, uh, I think, no better social policy, no more equitable social policy than creating jobs. Uh, at the end of the day, it's the unemployed uh, who usually fall through the poverty uh, trap, uh, and uh, uh, my, my emphasis has always been and will continue to be uh, on creating jobs and on making sure that these jobs are well-paying jobs. If the first four years were about cutting taxes, the next four years, should the Greek people place their trust again in us, would be about raising wages. Uh, I know this is also a discussion taking place here uh, in, uh, in Japan. Uh, but it's, it, is, it is important because as the economy is growing, as businesses are doing better, uh, it is important to make sure uh, that uh, there is a dividend to be shared with employees and not just with uh, shareholders. Uh, and employers. I, I really, really uh, insist, on, uh, insist on that, and we will make sure that we have the appropriate policies to give businesses also the incentives to move uh, in that uh, um, uh, direction. I believe that in times of crisis, you have to be both radical, but you also have to be practical. I lead a center-right um, uh, government, uh, uh, but I think we've been able to be both quite liberal in our economic policies, but also rather progressive uh, in our social policies uh, without compromising the need to enhance our national security. And I believe that there are no inherent contradictions, ideological contradictions, in being able to deliver uh, these policies. And you know, public policy is frequently about coming up with innovative solutions to new problems. 
for example, how do you deal with, uh, with the fact that uh, in an energy crisis you suddenly realize that there are many uh, energy companies that are producing um, windfall profits? How do you tax them? How do you use the proceeds? We've decided to put, uh, uh, you know, at the European level, and we're also implementing it in Greece, uh, an extraordinary tax on our refineries, uh, which uh, produced uh, very big profits as a result of fluctuations uh, uh, in the oil market in 2022. But we use these profits from two refineries to provide an extraordinary support um, uh, for households uh, with their supermarket bills. So uh, we essentially give them a coupon to help them with the supermarket bills and address the cost of living issue. And this is a one-off measure because the tax is also a one-off measure. So these two uh, measures uh, are, uh, are, are, in a sense, uh, uh, very much uh, aligned. So let me pose the question, uh, what is Greece's place in, uh, in the world uh, today? Greece is uh, the oldest uh, parliamentary democracy in Southeast Europe and the Eastern Mediterranean. It is uh, fully integrated into the Western community. Uh, we've been members of NATO since 1952. We've been members of the uh, European Economic Commission, what is now the European <coughs> Union, since 1981. Uh, um, we have joined the Eurozone. We're members of the uh, Schengen uh, uh, area of free movement. Uh, of people, but we're also active partners in the Western Balkans and aspire uh, to play a, uh, uh, a leading role uh, in what is happening uh, in, uh, in our region. Uh, but we're also very close to the Middle East, close to North Africa. So we are literally at the crossroads of three continents. Uh, it is an advantage. Uh, we need to properly leverage it. Uh, and of course, uh, we've also, in our part of the world, had to deal with what many of us thought was unthinkable, and that is a war in Europe, uh, and uh, which has, uh, I would say, uh, changed uh, everything. Uh, it has changed the global geopolitics. I think it has also brought Japan closer to Europe, uh, because Japan was always close to the U.S., Europe was close to the U.S., but I think this is a great opportunity to bring Japan closer to Europe and Europe closer to Japan, not just for economic, but also for uh, geopolitical um, uh, reasons. So the war, as I told you, came on top of many other crises we had to deal with. Uh, uh, we frequently use in uh, sort of uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in, in, in political uh, science, uh, you know, the term polycrisis. This is exactly what we have to deal with uh, today. Hopefully, at some point, we will be able to sail through calmer waters. But for the moment, we policymakers and politicians have to be prepared for this very, very complicated uh, international uh, environment. Uh, uh, and uh, when we had, you know, when we were faced with the war in Ukraine, for us, uh, there was no doubt that we had to uh, fully, fully support um, Ukraine and its fight. Um, for independence. I think many, uh, especially Russia, was surprised by the unity that the European Union has shown, but also by the unity uh, of the free democracies of the world in supporting Ukraine. This was particularly uh, important uh, uh, for us, not simply because we have a moral obligation to support Ukraine, but uh, I would say for two additional reasons, uh, one of them not very well known, we have a, a very vibrant Greek community center around the areas of Mariupol uh, and Odessa. Mariupol, as you know, was one of the cities that was first hit by the Russian uh, uh, invasion. Uh, at the same time, uh, we, in our own neighborhood, have to deal with a difficult neighbor, and I'm referring to Turkey. And we want to make sure that under no circumstance will we ever allow a precedent to be set that borders can be changed by force and that international law is actually not respected. We have an additional reason to be very, very supportive uh, of Ukraine and its battle um, uh, to make sure it stays uh, an independent, free, uh, and, uh, and sovereign nation. But interestingly enough, every crisis uh, presents opportunities. Uh, and this crisis, which highlighted the dependence of the European Union on Russian gas, 
presented an opportunity for my country to reposition ourselves uh, in the regional, the European, but also the, uh, the global uh, energy map. Um, how did we do it? First of all, uh, by making sure we offered an alternative entry for liquefied natural gas, not just into Greece, but into Europe, significantly investing in our uh, regasification infrastructure uh, in northern Greece. We've been able to supply gas not just to Greek consumers and Greek businesses, but also to many of our Balkan partners. And it is my commitment to, be, to make sure that we will be a provider of energy security um, uh, for our neighbors. Uh, at, the same, um, uh, at the same time, uh, we are also becoming a much bigger player in renewables. As I told you in my introduction, we are a leader and we want to remain a leader and strengthen our position in renewables even further. We have 10 gigawatts of installed wind and solar power with another 3 gigawatts of hydropower. We want to take that up to 25 gigawatts by 2030. We want to be able to export uh, green uh, energy, uh, and uh, we have enough investor interest uh, to be sure that we will be able to reach that target. And of course, also develop uh, completely uh, new uh, uh, industries, um, uh, such as uh, offshore wind, uh, uh, which is going to provide in 10, 15 years the bulk uh, of energy produced uh, uh, from uh, wind farms, simply because you can put much larger wind turbines uh, in the sea and because the wind uh, flows in the sea are actually steadier and more predictable uh, that they are uh, on, uh, 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 on land. So this is just a sort of small summary of, um, uh, of what we have achieved and how we have also been able to, to deal with crisis and turn uh, these crises uh, into, uh, uh, into opportunities. So uh, I want to leave you with uh, so with a positive message before we turn it to you know, any questions you may have, if we have time to uh, answer them, I'd be very, very happy uh, to do that. Uh, uh, that uh, turnaround stories actually can happen. Uh, there are certain you know, specific preconditions uh, for this to happen. I think you need you know, stable and, uh, and good leadership, but you also need um, uh, a necessary social consensus. Uh, what is remarkable about Greece is that uh, many of the difficult reforms we have implemented ended up being not so difficult because we kept thinking in terms of what was difficult five or ten years ago. But Greek society has matured uh, a lot. So, for example, um, ideas such as privatization or you know, sub private supplementary pensions, these were anathema uh, five, ten years ago. That is uh, no longer the case. So. When, for example, uh, we go talk to our uh, young people and we tell them, look, we want to open up uh, universities to private partnerships, which is obvious, um, you know, for any leading university, but we still consider it as something, quote unquote, bad uh, in Greece. Suddenly, there is uh, there is much more buy-in because uh, uh, most people understand that if the world is changing, uh, we also need to change uh, and uh, and we need to uh, adapt. Uh, so. Uh, all these uh, changes that we've implemented would not have happened, I think, uh, if we were not able to, to explain why they are important uh, and to be sure that we have enough support to actually uh, drive them uh, uh, through. And I do hope that uh, you know, Japanese companies, uh, Japanese investors uh, will be able to also benefit uh, from uh, this Greek growth story. Uh, I will be leaving Japan uh, very optimistic about, as I told you, about the state of our relationship. I think we have, uh, uh, to the best of our ability, explained uh, to people who may not necessarily be that knowledgeable about what is happening in our corner of the world uh, why Greece uh, is, uh, is an interesting turnaround story. And investors usually look for contrarian stories, not necessarily the most uh, uh, predictable uh, investment. Uh, uh, destinations, uh, uh, and uh, I am uh, uh, absolutely sure that you know something really good is going to uh, come out of this uh, trip. And for those of you um, who are students of public policy, as many of you uh, uh, in this class are, uh, I think also for the students of tomorrow, uh, our our successes, our failures, but the Greek story provides a very interesting blueprint. I would say. Uh, an interesting uh, case study uh, of what uh, 
you know, public policy uh, in action uh, really means, uh, and I'm always glad when I have the opportunity um, uh, to talk about uh, uh, our experience uh, as uh, uh, I had today in your prestigious university. Thank you very much for your attention.